Well, hello, friends, neighbors. Johnny Rich's neighbor here. Welcome to the Nook. And it's Sunday, so I've poured out. And I'm going to talk to you about a couple of samples. These come from Whiskey and Theo. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, and they're both bourbon. So I've got a, a High West American Prairie bourbon that was finished in sherry. And then um, a label is missing. It's Starlight from Indiana, and it's their bourbon that's also been finished in sherry. So I suggest if you want to sip along, if you have either of these, the High West American Prairie or the Starlight uh, bourbon finished in sherry, and if not, any bourbon finished in sherry to see if any of these notes kind of resonate. Come on back. Three, four. as I said in the opener, uh, the first sample that I have here is uh, from High West. Uh, High West out of Utah, uh, you know, they do produce their own whiskey. I'm quite sure this is still from when they were sourcing. Uh, and I, I dug around a little bit and the, one of the better sites that I saw, Breaking Bourbons, a, a site that I often click in, and they talked about how uh, there is MGP in here and that's the higher rye, uh, was it 27%? I wrote it down, 21% rye. But then there are other bourbons in here, uh, could even be as low as 8% rye. So I really don't know the mash bill. It is sourced bourbons that have been uh, blended and married together and then finished for one year in Oloroso Sherry. So I do like uh, some of the, the ryes I've had from High West. I can't recall ever having this bourbon before. So let's try nose and taste. Oh, it's interesting. Right up front, I got a real mix of some Christmas spices and baking spices. Yeah, what is that note? Like almost a graham cracker, almost a, um, like a, was it chocolate? There was some kind of sweet dessert nature right in the nose. Yeah, maybe it was, um, yeah, like a chocolate cake. It's too much chocolate. I'm sure there's no chocolate on here at all. It's a mental image. I'm trying to get at um, like the spicing that you get in, in some nice bourbons, a higher rye bourbons. Um, and vanillas for sure, caramel, toffees, yep. Yeah, all of that's there. But what was standing out as different is must be the interplay of the sherry. But instead of just rich, uh, dark, leathered, red fruits, the fruiting made it into a uh, maybe a Christmas cake, but something like that, like, you know, where you get that interplay of some spice and some fruit. It's coming off really interesting. Yeah, let's give it a try. Cheers. Okay, the palate has brought it back down to more bourbon notes, right? I've got some nice oaks in there, definite caramels. Um, the spicing is a little more cinnamon, a little more traditional spicing now. That chocolate that I was getting there didn't follow in, so it's not chocolate, but it is a sweet cherried, sweeter candied, brandied fruit that I am getting through the mid palate, not so much on the front. And now I can connect that back to the nose. So the nose on its own was pretty unique. Now when I brought the palate to play, it's kind of married better into, oh, this is a nice bourbon. It's a little hot. Uh, I think this is about 50%, uh, but it is a little bit, a little bit um, aggressive, but the flavors are good. And the nose is still interesting. It's still a little bit, cocoa graham cracker not sure why but it's pretty good sweet and fruity and I, I think if you like finished bourbons just give it a try so moving over from Utah into Indiana this is starlight bourbon uh, which I think they name after Carl T Huber and this one we know their mash bill I'll put it down below 56 corn 27 rye somewhere in there uh, so a fair amount of malted barley as well uh, and and this is um, aged or finished in sherry for eight months. So this was finished for a year and this is finished for eight months. It is a single barrel release and I think it's slightly higher than the 50 here, 51, 51 and a half. Well, this gives me more uh, a dark cherry with some vanilla and a little bit of oak, some char, 
Yeah, definitely a dark Bing cherry. Maybe again, I don't know. Maybe I, I had or wanted some chocolate. I haven't had any chocolate today. There's a little darker chocolate with that full ripe cherry in with that sweet floral vanilla. Just comparing quickly to the high west. A little more confectionery sugar toasted marshmallow came out just in the comparison. All right, diving into this starlight. Cheers. Well, that was interesting to follow the nose. So it is a comparison. It's just a tasting. The nose on this starlight Carlton Huber finish in Oloroso was richer, thicker, darker, more inviting than the Toasted marshmallow, burnt sugars, but there's this graham cracker fruit note here that I, I don't quite know what to do with. But the palette wasn't quite as rich as I'd expected. It still had all of the good classic flavors. It's a solid bourbon, a little spicy with rye, and, and little thinner caramels, not as thick in the mouth, not as, as coating as the nose. I thought I was just going to be blown away. It's a great palette. It's definitely tasty. Uh, and maybe I'll give it a quick another sip before final thoughts. I'm glad I gave another sip. There is another layer of, um, of richness in here that, that took a little bit to get at. There's a little, a little cooked um, brown sugars and a little more um, you know, oaks that kind of were hiding up front. So maybe with time, this will start to speak what the nose was promised. These are actually both really quite good. And, you know, Whiskey and Teal, thank you so much for sending these samples. They're, they're not available in my market. It's so much fun to have Utah and Indiana. I know you're sharing more of your, your passion for the Pennsylvania whiskey scene, but this was a nice um, detour. And I think both of them had gifts to give to people that are looking at bourbons and what happens when we spend some time in an ex sherry cask. This high west the nose just didn't pull me in but the palate gave me better layers here i had kind of the reverse the nose was very rich and dark full cherry and the palate was good but took a little hunting i'm going to try them both with a bit of water and see how they express i hope your journey with whatever bourbon you had in your hand uh was equal as exciting now i'll do a little caveat at the very end which is uh, Whiskey and Theo, you sent me samples, but this one didn't have a label. Now, every other one had a label that matched, and so I assumed this was. And the notes, certainly the nose, told me this was a bourbon that had wine influence or sherry influence for sure. But if it doesn't sound at all like notes you've had before, let me know. I've certainly been wrong before. Thanks for joining me here this Sunday, and I hope you guys just have a fantastic week. Take care.